God with us. As you remain standing, I'd like to open up with a verse of scripture that's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23. And here's what the word of God says. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Do you know that the, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that 700 years before Christ? I wonder if he even knew what he was prophesying. I mean, I know he was a man of God, but when he made that prophecy, I wonder if he knew the fullness of what was going to happen 700 years later. And then Jesus comes on the scene. Well, you and I now know what that means. And something God put on my heart that I want to share with you today. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, I want to thank you for the word, your word, your word that has life, has meaning, has encouragement, has strength. It's your word that gives us life. So Lord, this morning use your servant to bring forth your word from your heart. And may your word speak to each and every one of us, those that are here, those that are watching online. God, may your word transform us, awaken us, revive us. So thank you for the ministry of your word, the holy scriptures that we have to hear your heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning, amen. Emmanuel. God with us. We hear this usually during this time of year because we always go back as we commemorate the birth of Christ. And this was given by the angel Gabriel to Joseph that his name was to be called Jesus and the prophecy of him being called Emmanuel, God with us. So I want to share this morning, and for those of you that know me, I, I, I always say that m most of the time, everything we read goes, always goes back to the book of Genesis, the foundation of God's Word. So I want us to go back to Genesis, because when we think about Emmanuel, God with us, you got to go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. Now, we know that God has always existed. God never had a beginning. God has always just been. And here we have the beginning of the history that we have. That in the beginning, God, now the word God in the Hebrew comes from the word Elohim. Elohim in its meaning is God in plural. God in plural meaning God made up of many parts or God made up of, in which we know, three parts. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Elohim, God. So here we have from the very beginning, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all involved in Genesis 1.1. So here we have in, in verse 26, in Genesis 1.26, it says, Then God, Elohim, said, Let us. There it is. It wasn't just a one God. It, it is one God, but it's three in that one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Elohim. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then in verse 27, and so, so, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then when you jump over to chapter 2, you, we, we read about God creates Adam, but he puts Adam in the garden. He created Adam in the wilderness out of dirt, dust, 
But he puts Adam in the garden, and in the garden, there is where he forms woman out of the rib of man. And now you have man and woman, humankind. And so from the very beginning, God was with them. God was with us, humankind. Are you following me this morning? I'm just building a foundation so you can understand why that Emmanuel, God with us, is so important. Because you've got to go back to Genesis when God created man and woman and he was with them. And I, I always say, and you've probably heard me say this many times, that just like air, God is everywhere. Somebody say amen. In the, what did I do with my phone? I want to read out of the uh, New Living Translation in Psalm 139. But I want to read it out of the New Living. Let me find it on my phone. Are you guys with me this morning? Amen. Isn't it great to have access to all these translations? Amen. In Psalm 139... Beginning in verse 1, it says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down and or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, and if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You see, we see the psalmist David as he writes this, he realized that God knows everything about us better than you know yourself. Amen. And David goes on to say that it doesn't matter where you go. God is like air everywhere. Doesn't matter. So God is everywhere. Do you understand that? It doesn't matter where we go and the planet or in the universe upon galaxies upon gal galaxy according to what God's word says he is everywhere so when Isaiah prophesied that about Jesus Emmanuel God with us speaking about Jesus the prophecy about Jesus it was to say that Jesus was going to be God in the flesh God with us 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says God was manifested in the flesh. The new, that, that, that's King James. The New Living says Christ was revealed in a human body. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, it says Christ is the, is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus is God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. But here's my point. You notice that it says God with us. It doesn't say God in us. It doesn't say Emmanuel, God in us. It says God with us. Now this is where it really makes more sense. And me, you guys know me, I'm very simple. I have to tell God, God, don't get complicated on me. Amen. And I began to understand. I said, oh, I got it now. I, I get it. You know, I never really saw this before, but it's so simple. 
You ever, you ever get mad at yourself that, you know, things are just so simple, but you make it so difficult? Amen? Am I the only one? It says God with us, not God in us. Now, as believers, listen very carefully, because I know I'm speaking to the choir here this morning. Most of you are all believers. As believers, we now know that God is in us. We know that. Because Christ dwells within us as believers. When you became born again and you cried out to God in repentance and you said, Jesus, be my Savior, and you turned your life over to him, you realize that that place of conversion, that place of the working of the Holy Spirit regenerating you, that's when Jesus says, you must be born again if you want to see the kingdom of heaven. you born again from above. Nicodemus, of course, didn't understand that because he thought, well, how am I going to go back into my mother's womb? He, 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 was, he was looking at it in the physical. Jesus was talking spiritual. You must be born again from above. And that's the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, we come alive once we were dead in our sins, in our transgressions. But now we're alive in Christ, in the Spirit. And so once you are born again, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit now comes in you. God, the Holy Spirit, is now in you. In John chapter 14, Jesus helps us see this. And here he says, let me read it in verse, uh, beginning at verse 15. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. The helper is the Greek word for parakletos, which means one who comes alongside. I will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, speaking to us as believers, for he dwells with you. And he, and, and he will be in you. So we know as believers, the Holy Spirit, Christ, is in us. Somebody say amen. But that's not what the prophet Isaiah said. The prophet Isaiah said his name will be called Emmanuel. The virgin will conceive a child, and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. So like the very beginning when... God walked with Adam and Eve, and God walked with man. Jesus comes into the scene, and now he walks with man. God in the flesh walks with man. Are you following me? Jesus walks among the people. I love what it says in Matthew, the fourth chapter. After Jesus comes out of the wilderness, after being tempted by the devil, he comes out. And he settles, and here's what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. It says, After leaving Nazareth, Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. Here Isaiah the prophet says once again, verse 15, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee, uh, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's other translations that say, the, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. It doesn't matter, whichever you like, but here's what I'm trying to say, is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How far can you stretch your hand? How far can you stretch your hand? Those of you that have longer arms than I do, how far can you stretch your hand? The kingdom of heaven, because of the... Pr Emmanuel, God with us, is now within our reach. 
the kingdom of heaven is within my reach this far. That means God with us, Jesus in the flesh at that time, is now amongst the people <laughs> and within their reach. Are you guys following with me? Am I the only one getting excited about this? Maybe because I know where I'm going. Can you say amen? Now, we're, that same chapter of Matthew from verses 18 to 22, you realize he calls four fishermen. He comes across them and says, drop your nets, follow me. They did. Same chapter from verses 23 to 25, the Bible says that he was amongst a great multitude of people. And in the midst of the great multitude of people, the Bible says that he healed all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. The epileptics, the paralytics, even the demon possessed, he was healing them all. He was God with them. And he was touching them because he was within their reach. You understand this? And, and as you continue to read through the Gospels, it doesn't matter. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see all the things that Jesus do as God with them. He was healing those who were deaf and blind. He was healing the lame. He was healing those, bringing back dead people from the grave. We only have a three accounts of that, but who knows how many people he raised from the dead. He forgave the immoral. He touched the hearts of tax collectors transformed their lives. I mean, I'm talking, Jesus was getting his hands dirty. Amen. Because he was walking amongst them by his presence. And everywhere he went, he touched lives. Are you, are you hearing? Emmanuel, God with us. So we see that from the very beginning, God has always got his hands dirty. Amen. Even from when that... You know, if you think about it, when he, when he created man, he created him from the dust, from the dirt of the ground, amen, from the dust of the earth. I was thinking about that. I said, oh, Lord, and there's some handsome bags of dirt in this church, amen. <laughs> if, uh, I'm just going to say this very carefully because I'm not going to say this to the women because we know they were formed out of man. But for the man, if, you, if there's a man sitting next to you, a man sitting next to you, tell him, you're a handsome bag of dirt. Amen. Come on, tell somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but do you realize that when we look at Christ and everybody that he touched, it didn't matter who they were, it didn't matter what they did, God loves them. Jesus reflected that love. God in his word, very familiar verse, one of our, found, our, our founding scripture on this, for this church, for God so loved the world. John three sixteen, For God so loved who? Who's in the world? People. He just doesn't just love his believers. He loves people. God loves everyone. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his best, his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever puts their trust in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you understand that God loves everyone? But then the ball's in our court. What will we do with that love? Will we accept that love and put our trust in Jesus or will we not? There is no middle ground. You see, the heart of God is totally revealed to us because it says in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone, somebody say everyone, everyone, to come to repentance. God isn't just saying, I'm only selecting a few. The Bible says, God's heart says, He wants everyone to come to repentance. In Ezekiel, in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 23, here's what it says. Do you think that I like to see wicked people die? Says the sovereign Lord. Of course not. 
I want them to turn from their wicked ways and live. The King James says God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. So God loves everyone and wants everyone to come to repentance. He sent Jesus to walk amongst them. God with us. Emmanuel. God with us. God wants to forgive everyone. God wants to save everyone. But you see, we have an enemy which is the devil Satan that wants to destroy what God has created and therefore he the Bible says he has blinded the minds of unbelievers he has caused unbelievers not to see the light not to come to Christ he'll do everything he can to keep them distracted to keep them occupied to keep them blind because he does not want them to come to know Jesus but God does that's why he sent his son God wants people to come to know Jesus, his son. God wants people to experience eternal life. That's the, that's the gospel. That's the good news. Amen. John 1, 12, but as many as received him. You see, we have to receive Jesus. But as many as received him, to them, who? People. To them he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. Is that, that's what the Bible says. Amen. To those who believe in his name. You see, Jesus is still Emmanuel, God with us. Do you understand that? Jesus is still God with us. But Jesus told his disciples, he said, I have to leave now. He prepared them with letting them know he's going to be put to death. He prepared them that he's going to have to die. They didn't want to accept that. They couldn't understand that. What do you mean you're going to die? What do you mean you have to die? They, they didn't see the plan of God, but Jesus knew his mission. And his mission was coming to the close where he knew he was going to have to give his life as the final sacrifice, the final atonement for God. And so he prepared his disciples, but here's what he said to his disciples. Let me read it out of John, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 5. He says, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Here's that same helper, the Holy Spirit, Paracletos, one who comes alongside the same helper that Jesus spoke earlier to us about, he is the same helper we're speaking here, and he says, unless I go, I cannot send him, because I am only one in your presence. But once I leave, watch what happens. And when he had come, in verse 8, it says, and when he come, has come, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin. You see, the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin. So we still have the presence of the Spirit of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, now in the form of God, the Holy Spirit, but it's still the Spirit of Christ. You see, they're all, they're all connected. They're one, it's one God, Emmanuel, God with us. So the same Jesus who walked amongst the people in the flesh, is the same Jesus who still moves about in the Spirit. Everywhere. Everywhere. Just like air, God is everywhere. So do you realize that when the prophet Isaiah said that, his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. It's not just for believers. It's for everyone. It doesn't matter what nation in the world. It doesn't matter what the remotest places are in this earth. God is there by the power, by the presence of the Holy Spirit. What is he doing? Convicting the heart of man. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the Holy Spirit is still working, and he has been working for over 2,000 years. Still convicting hearts like he did mine. 
like he did yours. So it's up to the individual to give in to that conviction. It's up to us individually. We can't say somebody else is going to do it for us. No, we have to come to that place of surrender. We have to come to that place of repentance. We have to come to that place of acknowledging, I'm a sinner. And the Holy Spirit does that. He convicts our hearts. But you see, according to the parable of the sower, we understand that there's going to be hearts that are so hard. And we understand there's going to be hearts that are so shallow. And we understand that there's going to be hearts that are so entangled with the things of this world, they just can't let go to let Jesus be Lord. But then there'll be those hearts that give in. The heart that the, the heart is just broken and it's fertile and the ground is good. And the Holy Spirit comes in and begins to produce a crop in us. So the word is this, is that Emmanuel, God with us, is still alive. That's why you and I have to pray for our loved ones. Doesn't matter if they're within your reach, they're within our text, they're within our emails, they're within our phone calls, if they're outside of the area, and we can still let them know God loves you and still pray that the Holy Spirit will convict their hearts, remove the scales, remove the blinders, so that they would come to the knowledge of the truth and come to Jesus. Now the ball will be in their court, but you and I can intercede for them. You and I can stand in the gap for them because we know God is there. He's with them. You see, God with us doesn't mean he's just with believers. He's with everyone. He is wanting everyone to come to repentance. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. God's Holy Spirit is convicting the world. That encourages me. That this Emmanuel, Jesus, is still working. Somebody say amen. I hope you know him. I hope that you've come to know him. You see, only you can answer that. Only you can, know, test, you can testify of what Jesus has done in your life. And if he has touched you and you're born again, I tell you what, that ought to bring us encouragement to know that God will honor your prayers to pray for those that don't know him. Amen. It might be your coworkers, it could be your family. It, it, you know, the list goes on and on. Just be sensitive to the working of the Holy Spirit. But know this, not everyone will come to Christ. I wish that could change but Jesus said, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Wide is the gate that leads to hell. And he said, many go in through that wide gate. They want what they want. But then Jesus said, but narrow is the gate that leads to life. Narrow is the gate that leads to salvation. Narrow is the gate that leads to Jesus. And Jesus said, only few find it. Only few find it. But those who find it, those who come to Christ, that's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, this very familiar verse of Scripture, if any man be in Christ, it doesn't say with Christ. Now we have the word in, not with. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. The, new, the word new, kaheos, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly in the Greek, but it just means that God just creates something brand new, just a new form. The old form is gone, but a new form has begun. That's what he does. He takes that which was dead and he brings it to life. And those who are in Christ now, there's where the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be. As he said, Jesus said, forever as believers the holy spirit will dwell in you jesus said it forever here's the great thing i love about this emmanuel god with us as believers man i'll tell you what this ought to excite us because here's what he says for those of us that are born again he said in matthew 28 20 i am with you always even to the end of the age this is the emmanuel i'm talking about that god with us and the god in us he will be with us. What? Always. Always. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, Jesus himself, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
God with us. Emmanuel. I hope this can encourage you today. And I hope it just sheds a whole new light. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. I hope this can encourage you because when we think about this time of the season and, and we often hear songs on the radio that talk about Emmanuel or the worship songs that we're singing in churches today, like today, God with us, Emmanuel, he truly fulfills that truth. He is God with us. Now, if you don't know Jesus, he is God with you. But just being God with you doesn't guarantee you heaven. You cannot, you see, you cannot go to heaven if God is just with you. You can only go to heaven if God is in you. Do you understand that? Amen. Because the world, they may not understand this, but God is with them because God loves them. And God is around every single person, almost 8 billion people on the world today. We're reaching the 8 billion mark. I know we're in the 7 billion, but we're reaching the 8 billion mark. Do you realize that God, because God is like air everywhere, and the Spirit of God is everywhere, He's convicting the hearts of nearly 8 billion people to come to know Jesus. Now it's up to us. But those of you that are believers here this morning, here's the other thing I can share with you. is because now we know that God is with us and God is in us, we know that God hears us. And there's a confidence that we can have. So no matter what you're going through, no matter if there's fear, anxiety, worry, depression, it doesn't matter. God is with you and in you. And he wants to touch you. And he wants to heal you doesn't matter what it is that we go through in life. Some are going through loneliness, brokenness. God wants to be with you and in you and heal you. That's the love of God. Lord, as I conclude, I, I really believe that we can sing that song we sang earlier, that you are God with us, Emmanuel. I pray that the lyrics of this song, Lord, that we close with would be our prayer, would be our prayer of gratitude, our prayer of worship. And if there's somebody here today, that it would be their prayer of acceptance, of surrender, because you are Emmanuel, God with us. So, Lord, thank you this morning where I really believe you said something so simple yet so powerful so that when we walk out of this building and we're in our community, in our neighborhood, in the marketplace, wherever we go about, in the workplace, we can now know that you're there everywhere. God with us. Let us look at people with different eyes. As you said to the disciples, lift up your eyes. The harvest is ready. Help us to be a people not so consumed within our own interest, our own values, our own lives, but to see others, that you're with them and you want to dwell with, within them. But they won't know unless we tell them. So Lord, take us out of our comfort zone and Help us to tell somebody that you are God with them and want to come into them. Turn us into evangelists, Lord. Turn us into soul winners. Turn us into good news spreaders. Father, we're just going to receive that and we pray that you have challenged our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Would you stand with me and Let's let them sing. You know what? Let's sing with them this morning. Amen. And then I'll and then I'll call for an altar call this morning. Amen. Oh, you've come to bring peace, to be love, to be nearer to us. So oh, you.
church we love you and you're our brother our sister if you're here visiting we love you and we want to just be able to pray with you we want to be able to just pray that prayer of affirmation that God is with you and if you're a believer God is in you but you you, you may just need prayer for whatever reason you know our associate pastors I'm going to ask you guys to come on up amen I'm going to ask a, a few others um, brother Fernando sister Patsy would you guys come up also brother uh, Joey and Sister Marnie, is she with you? Amen. Would you guys come up? Amen. Amen. Brother Ben, would you come on up? Amen. Just stand up here also, Brother Ben. Amen. You guys just spread yourself out uh, up in the front also. Amen. Just, amen. I want to also join them, but we want to pray for you. Whatever that need is. Now, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, listen, I'll tell you what. I want to ask you to come and just say, I want to know Jesus. I realize that maybe God is with me, but I want him in me. If you're not born again, you can't make heaven your home by just God with you. He's got to be in you in the person of Jesus as Savior and Lord. You must be born again. We want to pray with you. These, these brothers and sisters, they know how to pray and help you in whatever your need is. So as the, as the worship team continues to sing, I'm going to ask you just to come on up. Amen. I'm going to have Alicia join me as we stand up here. But just come to any of us. These prayer partners know how to pray for you. Whatever that need is. Amen. Alicia, come on up. Amen. Would you come as they sing? Amen. Can we just lead us wherever you want? Amen. Our deliverer, you are Savior. In your presence we find our strength. Over everything, our redemption, God.
just remember that God is with everyone. God is with everyone. When you look at that person, it doesn't matter who they are, what they've done, just let them know God is with you. But let that be the opportunity for you to share that God wants to be in you, in them. Be the evangelist that God has called you to be. You don't have to know much. Matter of fact, next year in April, we're going to have an evangelism school here at Agape coming in the springtime. I don't know if many of you have heard of Evangelism Explosion, amen, but Evangelism Ex Explosion is going to do a workshop from in this region, in this area, in this state. Are we the only state? Is there neighboring states, Kevin? From all over the United States, we will be hosting an evangelism school for that weekend. And uh, it's good to have Brother Kevin and his wife with us this morning. They're evangelism directors, amen. And so uh, that's going to come in the springtime. So God is really causing something to happen in our community. And we're going to be a big part of that, amen. Amen. Those that are praying, keep praying. But I want you to just, uh, we're going to give a closing prayer. And those that are praying, they can keep going. Amen. We don't want that at the end, but amen. Father, thank you for speaking into our hearts this morning. Thank you, Father, for the word that you brought to our attention, that you are God with us, Emmanuel. And Lord, may this encourage us to pray even more, to know that your spirit is working and your Holy Spirit is everywhere convicting people to come to Christ. Don't let us underestimate that, Lord. We know it's up to them. We're not going to force no one. You don't force no one. But Lord, let us love people. Let us show people the love of Christ, the love of Jesus, as we go about in our daily lives. Take us home safely today, Lord. And Father, we just want to give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Amen.